The Nun 2 is a sequel to The Nun movie. After Sister Irene defeated the demon named Valak by spitting Jesus Christ's blood on its face, the gateway to hell at the St. Carta Abbey was also fixed, and Maurice saved Irene's life. Later, when they were leaving the Abbey, we saw the Antichrist symbol on Maurice's neck. Spoiler alert and listen carefully. I am only going to explain this once, you little piece of shit. The story starts with a boy, Jacques, running towards a church. The father ordered the boy to bring the wine flask from basement. After assisting the father in performing Catholic rituals, the boy went back in basement to put where the flask was and noticed something strange in the shadows. The wine flask shattered, and the boy ran upstairs to inform the father. They heard some noises from church and went to look. They noticed that the holy water is boiling to the point where it's completely evaporated. A nun figure is then revealed in the shadows. Father's bone shatters, and he is lit on fire as the nun opened its eyes. We then see a man walking away an alley, casting the nun's shadow on the church. Sister Irene has moved to a new church where she met another sister named Deborah. She questioned her belief and faith, and they both shared their stories. Irene was separated from her mother at a very young age and then was sent to church. Something similar happened to Deborah when she lost her mother. Her father sent her to church to serve God. Later, one of the sisters is telling the story of St. Carta's Abbey, how the Duke had invoked a demon by creating a passage from hell, and that a sister defeated the demon using the ancient relic, the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ. Irene is listening and is quite terrified as she was the one who fought the demon. It did leave a bad experience on her. We then see Maurice now working as a caretaker for a school of orphans. Still unknown to the fact that Valak has a possession over him, he also got emotionally attached to a girl named Sophie. Her mother is the teacher in this school. Later, a boy knocks at Maurice's door to deliver some items for school, but no one answered. As he is about to leave, the door opens and he went inside. After placing the items on shelf, he heard some chalking noise from the other room. As he followed the noise, he saw Maurice standing in front of a mirror acting strange. The nun peeked from the shadow, and the boy was scared to death and ran away. Meanwhile, Reverend Mother told Irene that someone is waiting for her. She went down to find Maurice standing underneath a lamp. Maurice asked her to save him, and suddenly, Valak's possession took over him. As Irene screamed, she woke up and realized it was dream. Next day, Cardinal Conroy came to visit Irene. He told her about the ongoing incidents of a 90-year-old sister who shot herself in Hungary. A priest slit his throat in Austria. A novitiate threw herself out of window in Italy. And a month ago, another priest was burnt alive in France. He told Irene that all these incidents started from Romania, the same location where she defeated Valak. Cardinal Conroy told her that the demon is still alive, and they want Sister Irene to follow through its tracks to find out what it wants. Irene went to the church in France along with Deborah. She saw some ashes floating and realized that it was the Father Noiret's who was burnt burnt alive. She then saw Jacques holding on to Father Noiret's rosary. Irene and Deborah went to his room where they saw a painting of Saint Lucy. Saint Lucy was saint of the blinds and was lit on fire by pagans, but she won't burn, so they gouged out her eyes and then murdered her. Sister Astrid told Irene that there was a boy named Jacques who assisted Father Noiret. There was also a handyman who left after Father's death. He was a world traveler and came from Romania. Irene knew instantly that it was Maurice. Back at school, three classmates of Sophie who bullied her, told her that they are sorry and wants to show her something. They took her to the locked chapel, where the principal lost her son during war. Sophie followed them to a room where she saw stained glass. The girl told her that the devil's eye lights up once in a day, and if she looked away, it would come at night as a goat to hound her. The girls left her alone. Sophie did not take her eyes off the stained glass, and she could feel that someone was standing behind her. When she tried escaping the chapel, her classmates blocked the door, and they were later scolded by Maurice. Later, Sophie was sitting in the hallway when her mother called out her name. As Sophie followed to check on her mother, she went upstairs. A door closed behind her. When she opened it, she saw the nun standing across the hallway. This scene is also a reference from Conjuring 2 series. Scared, Sophie ran downstairs, and Holy Mother of God, the nun was standing right in front of her. Main doors opened, and as light shined through, there was nothing but damped wall. Irene is standing in an alley when she saw Jacques. She recognized him as she had seen him in her visions. She asked Jacques about Father Noiret's rosary, and he told Irene that he still has it, and ran away with the group of boys. When she followed Jacques, they vanished in thin air. She then came across magazine stand, and as the air blew, it revealed scary faces, finally portraying the nun. She went closer to look at it, and the nun suddenly grabbed her throat. Irene started having visions, where Maurice stabbed a little girl in eyes, and the little girl is holding on to a relic. The little girl's eyes glowed. Irene fainted, and was later found by Deborah. 
Next day, a doctor examined Irene, and he told Deborah that she is fine. Irene woke up and shared her dream with Deborah. The demon wants to get his hands on an ancient relic, and he is using Maurice for it. Maurice might not know it yet, but he is possessed. Deborah gave Father Noiret's rosary to Irene, and told her that Jacques came by and left it. It had a symbol that Irene had seen before but couldn't place it. They saw similar symbols in the pictures of dead priests. Irene and Deborah went to the Catholic archives, where Irene knew a librarian who could help them. The librarian told Irene that the symbol on that rosary is a family crest, the family of St. Lucy. When pagans killed St. Lucy, her family escaped and has been taking care of her eyes, which is now a holy relic of great power. Irene realized that the demon is after this relic. Librarian said that this demon was once an angel and was cast out by God, and he was also there when St. Lucy was murdered. He has been chasing after the family ever since, killing them one by one. Librarian told them that this relic was given to a monk in St. Mary's Monastery, which has now turned into a school for orphans. Irene and Deborah then rushed towards the location. Principal Laurent heard some noises, and when she went outside to check, she found Maurice standing in front of the chapel. When Laurent called out to him, he came back to his senses and left the premises. As Laurent is about to leave, she heard her dead son's voice inside chapel. She unlocked it and went inside. She saw glimpses of her son, and when he was finally revealed, Valak had taken over his soul and started attacking Laurent. A metal hook fell on her, taking her life. Next day, the teacher discovered her body. And the same night, Morris is having fun with Sophie and Kate, dancing to the music when he suddenly fell. Kate saw an Antichrist symbol on Maurice's neck. Maurice is trying to get a hold on himself, and when he looked up, he saw Valak's painting. He realized that it's still alive and told them to run. They came across Sister Irene who told Maurice to stay away from the mother and daughter. She told Maurice that it's inside him. Maurice is then taken over by Valak and now was headed to the chapel. Irene commanded Valak to leave Maurice alone and Deborah hit him with a metal rod. They tied Maurice and went to find the relic in the chapel. Sophie told them that the goat's eye glows up once a day and with the help of a flashlight, they pinned down the spot where the relic was buried. As they started digging, Maurice woke up and broke through the binds easily. Irene found the relic, but Maurice also came and lift her up by her throat. Irene dropped the relic which was picked up by Sophie and she hid in the bell tower. Maurice followed her and called out to her saying that he is her friend and means no harm. Relic started glowing, and as Maurice was about to attack, he was stopped and stunned by the relic. A shockwave came from the relic that shook the whole tower and it started to fall apart. Sophie was hanging on to a wooden ledge when Maurice was trying to get a hold on her, but ultimately fell. Irene came to the same spot looking for Sophie. They both reunited, and as Maurice was about to attack Sophie, Irene stopped him using the relic. Maurice started bleeding out from his holes. The demon lost control off Maurice's mind. Turns out the demon faked it. He got the hold on the relic and finally equipped St. Lucy's eyes. Valak wanted to take revenge for what Irene did to her last time. It levitated Irene in air and lit her on fire. As Irene was screaming, she remembered her mother, and turns out there is a connection. She is also a descendant of St. Lucy. Irene's eyes glow and the fire extinguished. The demon is shocked. When Irene looked at demon, its neck snapped. Meanwhile, Sophie tried running away as Maurice chased her. Maurice was about to attack Sophie but was stopped. Not sure exactly what stopped him, but I'm guessing that it was Irene as she was looking directly at him and was holding on to Sophie. Irene and Deborah prayed together to turn the wine on the floor into Jesus Christ's blood. As she completed the prayer and said, Amen, the barrels containing the wine burst open. It had turned into Jesus' blood and set Valak on fire. Valak melted and lost the possession over Maurice. It was burning until it was completely eradicated. Maurice came back to his senses. Next day, he reunited with Sophie and Kate and was thankful to Sister Irene. After credits scene, Ed receives a call from Father. Maurice was possessed by a powerful demon. This is where Lauren first encountered Valak. The End some parts of the story were not explained because they were completely unrelated and made no sense. For example, the goat from Tainted Glass vanished and came to life in its demon form. It started chasing after the orphan girls and injured one of the girls who bullied Sophie. Thank you for watching till the end. If you have not subscribed, then click here and be notified every time a new video is uploaded. Good luck and stay safe. <laughs>